Out of the hundreds of boots and shoes I've cut apart on this channel, the most insane arch support out of any of those boots or shoes, even compared to the super high heel, like uh, cowboy style boots and logger boots, this boot has the highest arch support out of any boot I've ever owned. And you might not expect it because it doesn't have a huge heel. It just looks like an average like wedge sole boot. So we're gonna cut this thing in half, dissect it, and figure out how White's has made the most supportive high arch boot in the entire world on such an unassuming platform that doesn't look like it has a high arch. So what is this boot? Well, this is the White's C350-CS, and it retails for $575, and White's positions this boot by saying, built by hand for the miles ahead. Progressive styling with white stitch down construction, the C350-CS delivers a comfortable fit that is ideal for long walks and even longer rides. So to me, this is a boot for somebody who wants all the positive benefits of arch support, but on a softer sole option for standing all day or walking a bunch, or for somebody who loves whites for work and like to have a big heavy duty logger boot, and they want something a little more subtle, a little less tall and more comfortable for the other aspects of their life. And that's why this is such a perplexing boot because wedge sole boots don't usually have much arch support. For the first few days I wore them, I could only wear them for a couple hours at a time because of how heavy that arch is. It was so intense that I thought maybe I got like a accidental factory reject or something weird was going on. And then once they broke, once they were broken in, I was like, oh, okay, so that was normal. Just ridiculous arch support. And thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. If you don't know what Factor does, they ship you really fresh meals straight to your front door and they're not frozen. So you don't get that weird frozen like reheating meal thing where everything's mushy, it's really fresh, and it's really del delicious. For me, Factor is the ideal example of doing something not based off of what the ideal self would do, but based off the actual behaviors. And a lot of times, food and nutrition is the last thing that you take care of for self-care, especially for me. And so that's why Factor is so important, because it allows you to eat healthy and stick to your regular routine and your lifestyle without sacrificing your health. And you can get options for a ton of different uh, diets and lifestyles. They have keto friendly, they're calorie smart, vegan, vegetarian, and 27 plus meal options per week. And the nice thing is it doesn't have to be for every single meal. For me, I'd almost rather just have like four meals a week made by Factor, and then the other three meals are either like going out with friends, or if I wanna make something, or if I just go off the rails for a weekend and just eat whatever. Factor at least kind of stabilizes me and brings me back to my equilibrium for at least four meals of the week. And one of the key elements I think people really sleep on is that they aren't frozen. They're really fresh and thawed out when they arrive at your door. So when you actually um, heat them up, it tastes like a regular meal homemade that you just throw in the microwave for two minutes. It's really cool. So use the links in my description or go to go.factor75.com and use the code POGROSEMAR50 for 50% off your first box. And once you click, my description will live update the count of purchases, which is really cool. So thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. So how did Whites make a boot with the highest arch support out of any boot I've ever worn on such an unassuming platform that isn't usually known for a lot of arch support? Well, it all starts at the last. And if you don't know what a last is, it's that hard plastic foot-shaped mold that the upper of the boot is wrapped around to give it its particular shape. Well, this is built on White's world-famous 55 last, which is a high arch and high heel boot last. And that's why you usually see it on boots like this. And White's describes this last as our second most popular last and our fourth official arch ease last. The 55 doesn't have a name like its siblings. Put simply, it is so uniquely comfortable it has never needed one to stand out from the pack. Introduced over 30 years ago, this last found its home in our offerings right away as a slightly lower arched alternative to the 4811 with the roomier toe box. For those interested in a boot that fits a little less tightly for a weekend wear, the 55 last delivers our trademark support and comfort without the severe break-in associated with a truly high arch. So similar to the 4811, they say it's a wider toe box, but I think they're meaning more around the ball of your foot because it's definitely a more almond shaped last compared to the 4811 that's a little bit roomier at the toes. So I'm not sure what, maybe I'm off on that, but to me the 55 is a lot more narrow than the 4811. And like I mentioned, you usually see this last on one of their high arch, high heeled casual boots or their high arch, high heel work boots because you need that heel to have enough room to build up the amount of materials to build the arch up to cup your arch. And so without a heel, you can't really build up the arch in the same way. So how do they do it? It seems like it's all about building up the heel inside and out without making it look like a high heel wedge sole boot. Because if you take a measurement of 
of one of their typical high arch boots. At the heel, it's one and three quarters inch tall, and at the ball, it's only half an inch tall. So you basically have to build up an inch and a quarter of material and height to build up the arch support to actually support you. And so one of the ways they do that is through the 2021 wedge that this is put on. This is the easiest way to build up a heel because the wedges are exactly what it says. It's a wedge, so it's taller at the heel than at the, the ball of the foot. And it's about half an inch taller at the heel compared to the ball. And I really like this outsole because it's super soft and squishy at 55 Shore A, which is why it's so thick because generally the softer the material, the less durable. But even though the outsole is soft, the puncture test we did still took over 300 pounds to puncture through. So you get the, the squish of the outsole with all the durability of materials throughout the sole construction is at least what it looks like. And it's really, really similar to the very popular Vibram Christie sole, which is also a wedge sole, but the 2021 is a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, and it has more of a height difference between the ball and the heel. So that's where you get at least half an inch of height. The next thing they do is through the style of construction because this is a stitch down at the toe and nailed at the heel. And so at the toe, the upper is flared out and then stitched down to the midsole as part of the construction. Whereas at the heel, the upper is tucked underneath, including the, outer, the external counter cover, the counter, and the internal layer of leather, which all wraps underneath, which will also increase the height of the heel by about a quarter of an inch. And it causes a little bit of an optical illusion because there's so much bulk and sewing at the toe and it's tucked underneath at the heel. This makes it look a little bit more bulky and this makes it look a little bit thinner, a little bit more streamlined at the heel, which causes a little bit of an offset visually, but you still get at least a quarter of an inch from all that material being wrapped underneath and not wrapped under at the toe. And then to the biggest clue, and maybe the most important aspect of this boot and how they've achieved the heel, is through the use of a lineman shank. And a lineman shank is this wedge of leather that runs through the midsole only halfway through the boot, and then it's tapered down to a point. And the, the reason that this is different is most boots in this style, including the Drifter collab boot we did, have a, a single midsole layer that runs the entirety of the boot. But for some jobs, you need a little extra rigidity and a little bit of support underneath the arch of your foot, because like linemen that are standing on their, their spikes all day or people that are going up ladders all day, they want a little extra support there above and beyond the, the leather shank on the inside. So that's where they introduced that lineman shank for actual linemen to support that arch just a little bit more for climbing on poles all day and standing on ladders all day. And that's why they call it a lineman shank. But instead of using it as a way to support the boot, they've used it as a way to raise the heel slightly without being super obvious and by still building up that arch support as it tapers to a point after the arch of your foot. So we're slowly starting to see where we're at. So we've got a buildup of half of an inch from the outsole, a quarter of an inch from the stitch down construction, and another quarter of an inch from the lineman shank for a total of one inch of extra height in the heel so far. That's about as much as we can figure out before we cut it in half. So there must be something else on the inside that's building up that arch, whether it's the wedge that we see here or like another shank. And actually before we cut it in half, why do people want this much arch? Because this is part of that barefoot February versus arch March thing we've been doing. Well, lots of people use the arch support boots for their work because of the intensity of their job. Whether it's carrying super heavy stuff all day, hiking long distances, or basically any really heavy manual labor job. And barefoot people would say that you just need to strengthen your feet, but not everyone has the time to exercise their feet for an hour a day. And some jobs, you just need to have the artificial support no matter how strong your feet are. When I was the sawyer for my firefighting crew, I had to carry my pack, my steel chainsaw, my wedges, my shafts, and all the rest of my regular firefighting gear. And that was an, at least an extra 100 pounds on my back all day, every day, for two weeks straight, 16 hours a day. And I don't think that the human arch and the human foot was made to support that much weight for such an extended period of time. And maybe the foot could be conditioned to handle that, but with what time and for what purpose? You know, like what is the end goal? Be especially where you're just increasing the risk of foot injury and foot fatigue, and especially in, in jobs where if you get an injury, you miss out on a lot of money because, especially with firefighting, it's such a short and condensed um, time to make money. Any injury costs you thousands of dollars. So for high intensity manual labor jobs, it is vital to have some arch support, especially with that much weight on your back. It's kind of like the difference between like a wall squat with nothing underneath your foot, you're just holding your weight up versus sitting in a chair. Like you can, you can wall squat for a really long time. You could maybe wall 
wall squat for eight hours, but it's not gonna be fun. And you, technically you could condition yourself and you could strengthen your legs, but you'll never be as stable as sitting on a chair. And now imagine if somebody dropped 100 pounds of gear on top of your lap as you're wall squatting, you could still do it, but at the end of the day, if that was your job and you're doing that for eight, eight to 16 hours a day for two weeks straight, you're gonna want some support. And so it's almost two different arguments coming from the barefoot world compared to the art support work world. And obviously this is not a really heavy duty manual labor, firefighting, logger job boot, but there's a lot of people out there like my hunting buddy Zan, who's around my dad's age, who wore these every single day on all the hikes for two weeks straight on a bear hunt that we went on last year. And he swears by them. And the reason that he loves these is because of that built up arch support that you can't get in any other wedge sole boot. And so he inadvertently stumbled on the perfect boot for him that gave him that arch support, that gave him the squish of the, the really soft outsole while still being a semi-casual look but being as durable as any logger boot out there. And for a guy like Zan, good luck getting an old farmer to do any kind of foot exercises to strengthen his arch when he could just be wearing a classic pair of boots that solves all that problem. So is it the ideal way of doing it? Well, it depends on what your job application is. Could you get away without arch support? Maybe, once again, it depends on your application, but it's more of a matter of, are you actually gonna do it? or you just need the arch support. So that would be the argument for arch support for this particular style of boot. So now let's cut these in half, see what's on the inside and see where that extra quarter of an inch of height is coming from. So let's cut these in half. All right, we got them cut in half, and uh, this was a tough one to cut in half because they don't make these in a hand-sewn stitch down style anymore. They just do the full regular stitch down. And these were my personal pair of boots. But the, re the reason I'm cutting them is because the 55 last just does not work with my foot very well. I would sacrifice the aesthetic for a roomier toe box any day. And so I just didn't end up wearing these as much as I wanted, and they've always intrigued me. I've always wanted to know how they achieved this boot. So let's see what's inside. So that's how they do it. The final piece of the puzzle is the leather shank. And it kind of acts as a filler for the, the upper that's wrapped underneath and adds a little extra arch support. But that's where we get that extra quarter of an inch. And if you look at this thing, it's absolutely ridiculous. There's no wonder this is completely undefeated in arch support and lasting arch support. Cause just look at this compared to a Red Wing. Like, Look at, there's four layers of full thickness veg tan leather underneath the arch of your foot. Compared to like a red wing wedge, you see why this has so much more arch support, why it costs so much more money, why it's so much heavier, and why this boot is absolutely wild to me. Be just look at the difference between these two. It's ridiculous. And to put that in perspective, for the red wing, the height of the heel is like an inch and a quarter, an inch and a third, and the toe is, 0.8 inches versus these whites, the heel is way up at two inches thick. And then the toe is just over an inch thick. So you have an entire inch of arch and heel built up on the inside and the outside of this boot. And you can hardly tell that that's what's going on on the inside of this boot. They, they disguise it really, really well. The only tell from the outside is that lineman shank. Other than that, you can't tell that this is such a high arch boot. And the design itself is nearly perfect. To achieve this with, it, it honestly almost fits together like a puzzle. Like everything just nestles in exactly where it needs to be. There's no like skiving or sanding down. It's just the components fit perfectly to build up this boot in a perfect way. It honestly looks like a more streamlined and perfected construction style compared to even their, their traditional boots. Like it's a very smart and perfectly designed boot. You'd see why people find such value in the arch support in this and don't find a lot of arch support in regular wedge sole boots. And so it really is a very unique boot in the market because it's the only wedge sole boot that I'm aware of that looks this good, that builds up this much arch support and hides it this well. 
And it's, I honestly feel like people are sleeping on this boot because I didn't realize how cool it was until we cut it in half. And there's like no reviews out there. There's not a lot of people that are hyped on this boot. I think because it is a little bit chunky looking, you, know, you definitely get some of the chunk. But for the most part, this boot does something that no other boot we've ever cut apart does. And you gotta give it up to Whites for doing that because they're a big enough company where they could just keep making the exact same boots over and over and over. But they saw a need in their customers that they wanted a, the same support, they wanted the same fill, but in a more practical, easy to use, and more comfortable platform. And that's exactly what this boot is, and they've done it perfectly. This is a really good boot. So let me know what you guys think, and if you own a pair of these, your experience in them. Because to me, this was by far the hardest arched support to ever break in on any boot. But once it's broken in, it just cradles your foot. Thank you guys so much for everything. I love doing this and showing you guys what you're spending your hard-earned money on and why some boots are twice the price as other boots, even though they look very similar from the outside. So thank you guys. See ya.